Welcome back to another episode of Talking Lamar. On this episode, I'm talking about a documentary I watched about a woman who thought she had the perfect marriage with the perfect husband, but boy, was she wrong. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Sorry, I forgot what I was talking about. What are you talking about? I am talking to you. That's just what I was talking about. It's Talking Lamar. Today on this podcast, we're going to have a discussion about a three-part documentary that Carla and I watched on Hulu. It's called Betrayal, The Perfect Husband. And we watched it, and I just can't get over how the whole thing panned out. I just couldn't get it out of my head. And I want to warn you up front, if you're planning to watch this documentary, and I encourage you to do so because it's great, this is not a review, but it's a discussion. So if you want to watch it first and catch this podcast later, that's not a problem. But you have now been warned. The lady's name was Jennifer Jennifer Fajan, and she attended Berry College in Georgia, right outside of Rome, and she was studying communications. And she met this guy, Spencer Heron, who was a senior, and he managed the school's TV station. He was handsome. He was outgoing. He was very popular on campus. There was an immediate attraction between them, and they started dating. So he was a very attentive, loving boyfriend. He passed her notes in the hall every day. She still had a big notebook when they did this documentary. She still got the big notebook with every note saved in it. They were madly in love, and it was the perfect relationship. But no matter how great it was, when he graduated a year early, I mean, he graduated, he was a senior, so he graduated a year early, she still had a year to go. And she did the most level-headed and grown-up thing I can think of. She talked to him. She broke up with him. She said, you know, I just don't want to be doing a long-distance relationship. I mean, it broke her heart. It broke his heart. But she wanted her final year at college to be unencumbered by that long distance relationship. And I was so impressed with that because it was very, very smart and the honest thing to do. Most people wouldn't do that. Sherry, what do you think? Do you think most people I agree wouldn't with they- you? I agree with you a hundred percent. That's a tough thing to do. And, and you know, it, it did him a favor too. Yes. But, I mean, it really yeah, did. So and I mean, mature. and he, I mean, they, they were headed, I mean, he, their parent, her parents loved him. I mean, everything was set, but she knew she had something she wanted to do. She, her career meant something to her and her last year in college, she didn't want to spend it on phone calls and going back and forth or whatever. So after graduating, she worked at a radio station for three years. Then she packed up without a job, moved to LA to get into the TV business, being a producer. So she did become a TV producer in LA. She had a lot of success. Like she she did shows like Jersey Shore. She did Extreme Makeover Home Edition. She did Judge Judy. I mean, she, she really had it going on. And during the time all this is going on, Spencer, he met a woman, got married, had kids. And she dated, Jennifer dated a lot of different people and, you know, had a great social life. But she just, Spencer had set the bar so high, nobody could measure up. And she said she refused to settle because what they had was magical. And once you've had that, you don't want to settle for anything less. So this went on for 20 years. And then out of the blue, Spencer reaches out and contacts her. They have a conversation. She finds out he was divorced. Um, He had business in New York, and uh, he knew that her travels would take her to New York. They wound up working out a day when they would be there, and so they met in New York. Jennifer said the magic was there. They believed they were soulmates. It was just a sign. It was time for them to do this. They got married, and they moved to Ackworth, Georgia, where Spencer taught video production at Cale High School. He won Teacher of the Year twice. He was wow. also in the Air National Guard. He was, it was a band in the Air National Guard, and they went to different bases and played and whatever. So, I mean, is your, it's just a storybook. I mean, can you imagine the love of your life? You do the right thing. You break up. 20 years later, you're both available. The magic is still there. I mean, it's, this is set I mean, up that's for everything. All, um- 
that's all I'm hearing is we have the bones here of a really great love story, but the fact that it's a three-part documentary on Hulu <laughs> has me biting yeah. my nails. Let's we'll get to that and- after this break. <laughs> <laughs> So they've got their house and, you know, he's the teacher and she's got some stuff going on and they decide they find this little wine bar and they decide to buy it and, and, and run it. And it'd be local, you know, the downtown area in Ackworth is really nice. And so they, they're running that and everything's going great. And they had been married for six blissful years. I mean, still giving her notes every day, just checking on her, talking. I mean, you know, when she was out of town, whatever, just great, 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 great. So after six years, she comes home. He didn't come out to meet her, which she thinks is really weird because he meets her in the driveway every time. So so she goes in and he's sitting on the couch and he's got his head down and he's just so he's going, it's all over, it's all over, it's all over. About that time, cops pull up. They've got a warrant. They come in, search the house, take him out the door. And she's like, what? And he, they arrested him for sexual assault on a student. And she's Mm. like, this is impossible. This is absolutely impossible. I know this man. And you know, it was, he was the perfect husband. There's no way he could be guilty of this. So his, her, his bond is like 55,000 or something like that. So she doesn't really have the money to get him out. And so she goes home and in an attempt to figure out what was going on, she got on his computer and starts going through it. All of a sudden she discovers a folder that says pictures. She opens it up. It's a bunch of pictures of naked women, a bunch of naked women. Then she starts to discover, she gets into his email account. She's seeing emails to other women and from other women. He was using the wine bar to take these women to. And it was women that he met. It was prostitutes that he paid. It was mutual friends. Some of the women that she were looking at were friends of theirs that she knew. He He had two to three year affairs with at least six women, some of them at the same time. She even discovered that he cheated on her the week of their storybook wedding. What? Oh, yes. And and you got to see this guy. He's handsome. He's just, he's just such a good looking guy, everything. So then He's got these students that he's teaching them, you know, the video and all production and all that kind of stuff. So he starts grooming this one girl when she's 15. And by the oh. time she's 16, they're having sex. Oh. And so she, she, and they interview her, they interview her. Uh, she said it got to a point where the guilt and everything was just so, so much. She could not, she just couldn't take it. She couldn't take it. So she finally went home and she said, I was just, my my blood was boiling in my veins. She said, I just had to talk to my mom. So she sits down. She tells her mom. When her dad gets home, her mom tells her to stay there. She tells her husband, we got to take a ride. Her husband, she's gone with her husband for like an hour and a half or something like that before they come back. And they say, okay, we're going to the cops. And so they go to the cops and everything starts to unravel. And it turns out he had had uh, sex with some other students and all of them were 16 because in Georgia, the legal age of consent is 16, but it is against the law for any teacher to have any kind of sexual uh, contact with any student, no matter what her age is. If she's 18, still... Yeah, go Can ahead. I jump in, Lamar, and just say that the fact that he was grooming these girls and waiting till 16 because he thought, thought that was his hall pass, his free pass, yeah. actually shows you more intention, more premeditation, oh, and yes. reveals him to be more of a predator than I think maybe that wasn't the effect he was going for. But they own this documentary. She does a phone interview and a couple of other, but she does a phone interview with that friend of hers. They were really good friends. And that woman, she, she says, I, I can't even tell you how it happened. I, I don't even know. And she said, I owe you an apology. There's nothing I can say to make this right. She said, but I'm there. He asked me to help him clean up when the things, uh, when the wine bar closed, help him pick some boxes up and stuff. And she said, 
the next thing I know, you know, she said, you know, evidently this guy was smooth. I mean, he was smooth. And this is all he did. And this has been going on forever and ever. He was sentenced. He was sentenced to five years in prison and 15 years probation. But he got out in three, but he has to register as a sex offender. The girl that turned him in, she now goes to police departments and different uh, organizations to speak about how to look for, to how to identify predators and that kind of stuff. I mean, she's she has had a lot of therapy and she's really strong. I mean, and this is her way, I think, of getting it back. You know, getting her her yeah. her power back. Yeah, and she's yeah. a great speaker that we, they watched. You watched her do a speech. Now I'm going to say. <laughs> that Jennifer, one of the things I said to Carla, she was obsessed with finding out why did he do it? And she talked to him while he was in jail multiple times, you know, trying to make sense. Of, she wanted an answer. She wanted something to make her feel an answer. But I told Carla, I said, she's never going to get that answer. It's nothing's going to justify this. That's not going to heal the hurt. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. He's just an asshole that's all he is he's an asshole <laughs> and you know but i gotta get it because i've been obsessed with this story since we watched it you know and it's just been you've got to watch it you really really do and even after i've discussed this if if you're listening to this and you think well no 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 you really need to watch it the documentary is done well jennifer handles herself really well and it really gives you a perspective if you watch it. it's three episodes and it is fantastic. The so. thing about a guy like this is you can, in some situations when a person has done you wrong and we'll stick to adultery or cheating and fidelity, yeah. right? In some, in some instances you, you can get an answer. Sometimes it's not a satisfying answer. Sometimes it's, I was there, she was there, I'm a dick. You know, sometimes yeah. that's the yeah. answer. But when you're dealing with, um, a predator, especially a child predator. It's a pathology that goes so deep right down to the subatomic level. You're never going to get an answer that satisfies. You're going to have to accept he is a sick mofo and yeah. you were the perfect cover for that for a long time. One of the things she kept asking him when she would talk to him in prison, she goes, look, if this is you, if this is, if this is what you have to have, why would you get married? He says, yeah. because I loved you. I love our, our love story, blah, 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 blah. She goes, but that this is not making any sense. It's not really that much of a love story. If this is your actions, you're only satisfied if you're doing this constantly. Wouldn't it serve you better to stay single? He says, you just, and he kept going, you know, oh, you don't understand how much I love you. And I'm hoping one day you can, she's like, no, there's not going to be one. You know, that's it. I mean, you want to, you want to tell me better camouflage than an epic love story yes. with your wife who's devoted yes. to you. You want to, yes. you want to, you want to, yeah, please. That's why he married you girl, because he knows who he is. He knows what he is. And you can only hide in plain sight if you have great camouflage. And he did for a long time. They talked to one girl that was in the class and she was very smart. And, and she said, you know, she said, now that I see what's going on, she said, I didn't believe this. And listen, listen, the girl that, that told this, she got completely, nobody would talk to her at school. I mean, she, her life was turned upside down because this was teacher of the year twice. This was, everybody loved him. He was everybody's favorite teacher, everything. Her life was a living hell at school. But this one girl said, now that I see what's happened, she said, he was grooming me. She said, because he was calling me. And when I left, when I graduated school, he wanted us to meet for coffee. And he was really showing me a lot of attention. And she goes, I'm thinking, oh, my God, if not for her, I would be in the same spot. You know, I mean, you know, if you if you talk to women and um, you'll be surprised at how many women when because a lot of times, it's, especially when you're a kid, even a teenager, you don't understand what you're seeing. Like she didn't understand what no. was right. No, she didn't. So but if you talk to women, a lot of women have a story to share that. um that's a near miss. Like yes. there was a teacher, there was a teacher in my high school and he was everybody's favorite teacher. He was the coolest, the most popular, 
Um, all the boys want it to be his bro and all of the girls want it to be selected by him for this special tutoring. And, and, and I never made that cut. I never made that cut probably because I came from a family of criminals and gangsters and was so <laughs> suspicious, was so suspicious yeah. of adults, yes. especially grown men. Like I just viewed all grown men as dangerous, threatening, um, powder kegs. So I didn't, I didn't make the cut into special, uh, land. And I'm really glad because now that I'm a grown up and have had, a, and have kids of my own and have navigated school with my daughters. Now I'm like, Oh my God, what the hell was that all about? What was that all about? This was a teacher who said one time in class, he was sitting on the edge of his desk, um, swinging one leg, talking about his own family. He had, um, uh, his first, he and his wife had their first child and she was six years old and he was telling the class that he and his wife had just signed their little girl up for ballet lessons and everybody was like, Oh, and he said, well, I mean, but there's no better way to guarantee that she'll have amazing legs. Mm. <laughs> yeah. wow. wow. Yeah. And you know why I've never forgotten that? Cause it was really jacked up. And all my alarm, all my internal spidey senses and alarm bells went off because first of all, um, you don't say that you don't say that no. in a room full of teenagers. That's not an appropriate thing for that space or anywhere. But the yeah. fact that that's what, you know, in talking to a group, a room of high school seniors about your six year old talking about her having sexy legs someday please, please defend that if you think you can. No, so it's indefen indefensible. Yeah. No way. You're so yeah. right when you said why, you know, if this guy has these proclivities, why, why get married? But, you know, it happens all the time. I've known of two guys. I, I only knew them. They were not friends. But uh, they made it a point to have sex with another woman the day that they were getting married. And you what? just say... If, if that's in your head that, that you want to be that guy, why are you bringing some poor thing into your life yeah. that you know you're going to make miserable? Because that won't because be the it's last. Time. Yeah. It's time to have that wife and those kids and all of yeah, that stuff right. in the background. And in this yeah. particular case, um, betrayal, he, what better cover? Because here's the thing, Bob, a married school teacher, um, is a married male school teacher has more leeway than a single yes. male school teacher. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly which right. Is un which is unfair, obviously, given this situation. Yeah. But I see it. Yeah. Well, now that I've talked this to death, I think I can move on with my life and get on to my next thing. But this, <laughs> this has just, this was an unbelievable documentary. I, that's going to wrap it up for us. Another riveting episode of Talking Lamar. <laughs> just like every time. We've enjoyed ourselves. We hope you have. If so, tell everybody you know, or even people you don't know. It's a great conversation starter. You might meet a new friend. Talking Lamar drops every Friday. Thank you for listening.